A warm welcome to this auction talk with Beelweb Auctions. Uh, one week ahead of every classic car auction we do, we gather here in our little studio in Gothenburg, Sweden, uh, to chat about a few of the objects on the auction list. Up until now, we have done it in Swedish only, but we thought we should do a version in English as well, since we have enthusiasts all over Europe and sometimes all over the world following our auctions. Uh, together with me, by the way, my name is Per-Oke Fröberg. Uh, I have Mikael Luft, who is one of the founders of Beelweb Auctions. Yes. Valuer, yes. Uh, with a speciality uh, focus on collections and museums. Yes. Mm -hmm. to, and to ensure a decent level of English, to balance our English, mm. <laughs> I have Sean Major. Uh, also a valuer and uh, with focus on export. Export, that's mm. correct, yeah. Uh, before we look into the auction list for next week, uh, I would like to ask Michael mm. to do a brief introduction to Beelweb Auctions. Yes, thank you. Uh, we, we started with Beelweb Auctions 2017 and our background was that we worked with a traditional car auction company and we started with that. 30 years earlier in 1991 mm. and uh, at those days we had classic car auctions two times every year in spring and in autumn and um, in the end of 2016 the biggest uh, Volvo collector in Sweden asked us if we could sell his collection so we, we made this home page uh, and uh, took our old system of looking at cars and uh, taking photos of them and uh, put it out on a uh, classic car auction uh, in this way for the first time. And shortly after that, five other museums and collectors came and wanted the same work. And uh, this resulted in where we are now, where we have auction every second week. Uh, two times in the month, we put out a new list with 50 cars. And uh, you can put the bid, place the bids during one week and we make marketing the week before and uh, what is done behind the home page is that we have five six experts driving around in Sweden visiting collectors and owners testing the cars taking photos and uh, making documentation we also have uh, three four depots where you can bring your car or we can transport them there and get them into a showroom mm. uh, f for more easy sale. I think that's very important for buyers in uh, in Europe that they can. We have the we have the text, we have the pictures, we have the documentation. But if they need any more questions, they can speak to a valuer, and the valuer can then connect them with the seller. Or I recommend that they hop on a plane and just mm. come and look at a few cars in the depots, so yes. they can get a feeling. And uh, what is special with our car auction company is that. Uh, we don't do like the other. Uh, other car auction companies say you must look before you place your bid and if you win an auction you are the buyer. You, you buy when you win the auction. In our system we say that if you are winning an auction and the reserve price is reached you get the right to buy. You, you are not buying. Your buying decision is made after you come to us and look at the car and so if and you say no I changed my mind in any reason uh, it doesn't cost you anything if you don't come you have to pay, pay the buyer's fee the buyer's commission mm. but if you come and look at the car and are not satisfied with our description you can step back and it. that is the very big difference and this is good in two ways uh, you you can place to the last Swedish crown or dollar or euro without being uh, anxious that you no. placed, uh, pay too much. You have a guarantee that you, are, you have the option to yeah. back out if it doesn't yes. live up to your yeah. expectations. Yeah. yeah, and it's also good for the, the seller because uh, if a buyer is not sure that this is the right thing, he, he, uh, we, we can sell it to the next bidder in the list and sometimes we can put it on another auction. There, we, we always evaluate the cars and look at them before we put them on auction. 
and they are all very sellable and cars for many buyers. Mm. And we're very flexible as well. We, mm. we, after we've been through the COVID period, mm. uh, now things are back to normal-ish. But under the COVID uh, times, we were, people wanted a little bit more information. So we were taking like FaceTime or WhatsApp films around mm. the car, mm. which makes it a little bit easier for people to make a decision on a, on a distance. Mm. Yes. So we're, we're, we're flexible. You can contact us and you'll see each car. You'll see who's the name like uh, under contact for the person who's responsible for the car. So you can always ask them to find more information if you need it. And Sean, you, you're responsible for export matters. Yes. What, what kind of support can you provide? Yeah, so basically every every car that's sold in the world ends up with me. And mm. then I help the, the, the buyer to organize transportation, um, making sure that everything's done with the payment side, mm. getting the documentation ready. I kind of guiding them through the process. Most customers that buy from us regularly, they know the process. But if you've never bought a car, and definitely not in Sweden, uh, you can contact me and I'll give you some help and help the process move smoothly for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're shipping cars all over the world. You could say mainly around Europe at the moment. We have sold stuff to Australia and Kuwait and to Hong Kong and Tokyo and oh, everywhere. But mm -hmm. Main focus is around Europe. Um, transportation isn't as expensive as you think. Um, shipping cars costs between 700 to 1,000 euros, mm -hmm. door to door nearly, mm -hmm. you could say. So process is really easy. Mm. Uh, so you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be scared of buying at distance. Right. And uh, about buying at distance, uh, for the buyers from, from other countries, our system is made so that we want you to come and look at the car or send you an, send an expert or we can help you with someone professional. Uh, it's not made to, to place a bid and then only uh, order a transport and then look at the car when it comes to you. Mm. Uh, you. Different buyers see things with different eyes mm. and it's very important that you decide before the car leaves Sweden, but you can decide after winning the auction, but not after getting the car home to you. No. Uh, that's, that's why we try mm. to push people to ask as much information yeah. as possible, because always there's a difference what I think is a great car and you think is a great car. Mm. But if you've got the, the, the basic information, mm. good mm. engine, mm. no rust, you can accept it. Mm. We have a list of uh, a car experts, classic car experts who can look at the car for a foreign buyer so he can help him to make the decision. Very good. Okay, now you know a little bit more about BeadWeb Auctions, uh, the way we work, and uh, therefore it's time to have a brief look into next week's auction and a couple of cars that's on that list. It's uh, 43 cars that uh, goes up uh, for sale on the 21st of April and I would like Michael to to start with a Swedish car. Yes, a very Swedish car and many people in Sweden and <laughs> other countries are sad that it's not still produced but it's the Saab yeah. and the, 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 the icon of Saab is the 99 Turbo yeah. and later the 900 and it's not so easy to find them because uh, 40 years ago this car was built and, and it most of these cars have been used as daily drivers but this car was long time parked at the Saab dealer in the corner in the showroom and uh, it has only 150,000 kilometers and everything inside and out is in still in very good original shape and condition and, and it's a fantastic uh, combination the green metallic paint and the green, green interior is green on green yeah and 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 the turbo engine with 155 horsepower makes it it a fun car to drive and it, in those days it was uh, was a real sports car and was very uh, big efforts in in, in but, rallies and things like that back in the day when i was a kid in england i remember a vet, uh, our, our vet came to look at a horse mm. and he came with this 
And I was like, what is this? A turbo? Never seen a turbo. Mm. And I mean, it was like something like a spaceship pulled up in our village. Mm. Everything mm. was mm. like a you know, brick shape. And this... The pub went empty. Yeah. Everybody oh, no went one's ever out. seen a turbo <laughs> before. <laughs> so I was, was uh, at the uh, old Saab car dealers south of Stockholm a few weeks ago. And on his wall, he, he was selling uh, those cars. And now he was nearly 80 years old. He had pictures of Björn Borg. Yep. Abba, Ingmar Stenmark, and <laughs> all, all of those them. celebrities uh, buying cars from him. And all these cars were Saab Saab turbos, turbos. Yep. 99 and 900. He was handshaking them and, and they were looking happy. And I asked, <laughs> how come that you sell to all these fam famous people? You know, I am uh, 50 kilometers south from Stockholm, so I could have... 5% lower price and these uh, yeah. buyers would also like to save money exactly. so they drove to me <laughs> Mr. Schmidt was his name Mr. Schmidt oh. great car uh, great Swedish heritage yes. uh, now Sean yeah a pocket rocket as an Englishman growing up in uh, in the late 80s 90s when I was like his sort of 18ish uh, most of my friends had the the extra thick wallet so they bought the Golf GTI unfortunately I was a little bit on the poorer side so I went for the Essex style uh, Ford XR2i and this is a Mark III and I mean these are so rare to find anywhere in the world it's so hard to find them because they made millions but they all rusted away mm -hmm. and this one is basically a one owner car from new uh, it's done 90,000 kilometers uh, exceptionally good, not rusty, not driven much in the last few years, but they've made it a service and now it's running. So, I mean, this is an icon of my era. And uh, it was, you know, it was the XR2 five speed gearbox, mm. woohoo, and pop out sunroof. Mm. For, uh, but the, the, the Fiesta were made in millions, but XR2 were oh, only sold exactly. uh, if, if, uh, not less than 100, not more than 100 in Sweden. And uh, in rally, they, they uh, were very good. They had nearly double the amount of horsepower as the normal one, oh. and, and so on. So, so I mean, it's 105 brake horsepower. It was like yeah. a Golf. So it was yeah. a Golf GTI. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, in England, they were they were super popular. Mm. It was either you bought the XR2i or you bought the uh, Vauxhall Nova GTI. Mm -hmm. And if you were a snob, you bought the. Golf GTI, no. okay. or yeah. Peugeot 205. A rare opportunity, right? Yes. Yeah, and it's a reasonably, extremely reasonable price, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of potential for someone to get a good car at the right price. And uh, now to something completely different, as they yes, say. The opposite. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, a Mercedes 600 limousine. Yes. Uh, that is also a very rare car and a supercar. Mm. Yes, it was the... the the biggest and, and most uh, luxury Mercedes of all models and also the most expensive car in the world mm. from the end of the 60s until 1981. And, and the presidents, uh, fa famous persons all over the world drove with chauffeur or, or were driven with chauffeur or drove these cars. And, and uh, this special car came to Sweden 1988 from America and has over 30 years has the owner from a Swedish uh, limousine company in Stockholm. And uh, it has also been two times down in Stuttgart where the Mercedes are, are mm. built for, for uh, restoration and service in a famous German uh, uh, car restoration company that are experts in 600 Verle Fahrzeug Technik. A mm. uh, lot of bills comes with the car. A lot of big bills. Big bills. Ni yeah. Nice uh, blue, dark blue paint, blue leather interior, everything in running condition. So, so it's a real good uh, collector item and, and the model is something if you have a nice car collection, this this always fits in mm. there. And the funny thing with these cars is now everyone was, was talking about central lock-in and a, a sunroof. And this was 
they had all this in the 60s with mm -hmm. uh, not electric but uh, hydraulic. Yeah, that was the thing that it was all hydra hydraulic. Keep, the, keep it quieter. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we cannot say uh, electric power windows. It's hydraulic Hydra power, <laughs> power <laughs> exactly. windows. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it was like well ahead of its time. Mm. Well ahead of its time. Mm. And made without any. Uh, it it didn't matter what no. the cost was. No, no, when Mercedes, no, 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 no cutting corner. Yeah. Just do it right. all in. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Mercedes so. uh, wanted this car to to be better than Bentley and Rolls and mm. Cadillac and Lincoln and so on. So so so. It was uh, interesting when we looked through the celebrities mm. with everyone: Elvis, Idi Amin, Brezhnev, Brezhnev, Saddam Hussein. John Lennon had a white one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's like. Mm. And Pablo Escobar's yep. the, dr the drug dealer, uh, yeah. his one got got uh, bombed. Yeah. All the good guys, <laughs> all, the, all the good guys and bad guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So regardless, if you want to be like a good guy or a bad guy, <laughs> you can be that in in your Mercedes 600. That's for sure. Exactly. Yes. Uh, Sean, uh, again, something completely different from a Mercedes 600. Uh, Most things are different yeah, from yeah, a Mercedes yeah, 600. Exactly. But but anyway, we get uh, back to reality now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We get back. British to cars. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't really that I should talk about only British cars, but <laughs> I'll, t I'll take that today. Yeah. So um, I've got two cars which have got huge potential. Uh, the first one is this 1973 Spitfire Mark IV with a 1296cc engine and double SU carburetors. This car has been in the, the owners had it for about 30 years, approximately. Uh, it's been stored in a barn and it was on a, they, they lifted the car off the ground so there was no moisture problems. So the car is in very good condition, no rust in the normal places, which is around the bonnet hinges or the, 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 the sills. Uh, interior is good, roof's good. The thing that needs, we started the car, so the engine runs, but you need to change the brakes, uh, brake cylinders and clutch cylinder. But there actually is a new brake cylinder included. So for somebody who's, it's good with cars, a little bit of sort of spanner time. You're going to get a really good car for a reasonable price. And they're fun to drive. And uh, the car was imported. It's got its left hand drive with kilometers mm -hmm. on the clock. We can't really say exactly what it came from. It wasn't the US, but it probably came from like, I would guess some, maybe someone had it in the military in Cyprus or something like that. They ordered it. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say, but nothing structurally needs to be fixed. And I mean, you can have a good fun summer car without having to cost mm. thousands and thousands. And the years. last owner had it for thirty years, approximately yeah. thirty years. He didn't use it much. No, it was his. Uh, it was his uh, in his in his house when I went in. It was a picture of him in his Top Gun sunglasses, leather jacket, and like yeah. sort of like those eighties black and white posters, you know, yeah, yeah. sitting there. Mm. So yeah, I really like the shape of this car and and. and the, it's nice to getting it out on the roads again. It, yeah, exactly. You don't need to do the, the expensive, boring things with fixing the, no. the, the body. No, no. And oh, it's oh. just, the, I mean, the parts are everywhere. Moss in Europe. Mm. You yeah. can buy everything. So mm. it will take someone a weekend and you'll get that running. Mm. Yeah. And, and there's yeah. another Triumph. Yep. Yes. Back over to uh, a TR4. Mm. This one is... Um, a 1965. It's a little bit of a little bit of a unique model if you're into t a Triumphs because it's got the sorry roof, which is like a sort of like a target top, and it's the IRS model. Uh, yeah, an independent rear suspension. suspension. Exactly. So you, <laughs> you've been doing some research. Oh. <laughs> no, so it's uh, it's it ticks all the boxes for a, for a Triumph guy mm -hmm. uh, or woman. Um, it's been the the owner bought it about approx eight, 10 years ago with the ideas to renovate it. And he started to buy some parts like the new roof and bits and bobs. But basically it needs a, it needs a floor to weld in and the, or oh, some internal. It is, it is a restoration object. It is a restoration object, but it's complete. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're gonna have to do everything. Mm -hmm. This, my vision for this car is you just fix the thing so you can get it MOT for the last time in its life in yeah. Sweden mm -hmm. and drive it as it is because not every car needs to be a show car. Right. So I'm, you know, I sell so many cars and we see them like so nice and what happens with them, they end up in a museum or they end up being driven 
three times a year. Mm -hmm. This car I could drive daily, mm -hmm. not through the winter, but just as it is, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of potential in this car because the parts are easily easy to buy. And a nice example of these are fetching sort of like 25 to 40,000 euros. So this is reasonably priced. So you can use it as a daily driver or you can do a full restoration. Potential, lots of potential. Mm -hmm. Great. Michael. Yes. A couple of uh, quite rare Volvos, right? Yes. And uh, two things make me uh, want to speak about them. F first, the, the models uh, S70R and V70R. Uh, they came from Volvo as really supercars because Volvo were competing with the uh, same body before the 850 and were winning quite a lot in, in British Touring Cars Championship. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were racing with the, the, the station car yep. and, and that made the other brands a little angry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and they were winning with kicking that. Kicking ass. Yeah, yeah. And they wanted to do, uh, they needed to do a certain amount of cars to, to compete. Yep. And, and those were sold for, for um, more than double price than the normal one. Yep. And, and uh, Volvo enthusiasts or sports car enthusiasts, they, they wanted these fast Volvos. So they continued after the racing time making uh, not many, but a few hundred of these, uh, what you see on the picture, the R model. And 99 and, and 2000 in, in, the, in the new shape, the, the S or V shape, little more rounded corners, yeah. ad, other uh, front and back and end, but in still it's the 850 body. And they had 240, 250 horsepowers. And, and uh, what the, the models in, in themselves are interesting. And then the other thing is that these cars are driven 290 and 310,000 kilometers. Mm. And this, we are living in Sweden, we are used to Volvo. This is not much for a Volvo. No. And, and for another brand, maybe, but not for a Volvo. And then the good thing is, the buyers now they buy them as as collector cars only to drive little uh, in trips small trips in the summer or to meetings and things and gatherings so it, it it's better to buy a long mileage car uh, and pay half the price because the low most of these cars mm. because we're living in sweden they've been tr driven long distances mm. yes. it's not 300,000 of driving in a city center no. people have been driving these 500 600 kilometers in one go yes. so high mileage mm. cars with long distances mm -hmm. is not something you should be scared uh, of. we see on the auction that uh, cars with ve very low mileage are, are, are for those are paid quite a lot of money yep. uh, if you want to save money or, or get a nice car, it's better to buy a car like this. The, the, the silver one we see here has a lot of documentation, what is done, and it has never been crashed and always f uh, fully serviced, full service history. Uh, the saffron colored, the, 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 uh, the ye yellow uh, red one. Uh, has only had one user since it was new. It was uh, as a show car in, at the Volvo dealer the first year, and then it has. We are selling it for the mm. the, the one and only owner, mm. and also uh, very very well kept. Oh, I spent hundreds mm. and hundreds of crowns mm. on mm. fixing everything. You name all those worn mm. parts; they've mm. been fixed <gasps> once or twice. And these cars, uh, when you come to to a Volvo or a car meeting, they are. People are always very interested in looking at these cars and they will raise in price and they are very rare. The, the S60R with, with automatic were built in 67 copies, copies only. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 this one, the station car, I think 200. And, and the, totally they made from this mo model more than one million car. Mm -hmm. Back, back in, the, back in the, have you got any English viewers? Back in England, these were the, used by the police. Mm -hmm. as police yes. cars yes mm -hmm. and everyone's scared to death of them because mm -hmm. you couldn't mm -hmm. you couldn't beat this car unless you had right. some sort of ferrari porsche top end stuff because the police had these trimmed to like 350 300 brake mm -hmm. horsepower mm -hmm. so they're extremely quick even today you can drive these cars and they're still fast yeah, yeah. the sweet in sweden they have a very active club for these cars and and uh, 
the, the station car you could get with all wheel drive and this is uh, one yeah. like that yeah. and the, the, the sedan were only front driven. So two good cars to buy in a collection and to have a lot of fun with. Yep. Right. So if you're tired of German techno, try some Swedish metal. Yes. Uh, last car in our little preview of next week's auction. Uh, Sean, we're staying in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, we're go... staying here in Hissing Island. I have to go back to, I'm nearly half Swedish now. <laughs> yes. I'm nearly 25 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Exactly. So I'm, uh, so I have to take my Swedish caps now mm. and my cap on. I mm. Swinglish, I'm speaking Swinglish. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a classic icon car. It's a, a PV Sport from 1965. It's the F model. Uh, so it's got a, it has a, it had a B, it's a B1800 engine. This car has had its engine changed. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically it's a B1800 without the double SUs and not the same cam. So it, it's not a sport inside and out. It's not, a, it's, a, it's a sport outside, but motor is not the okay. same, but it's not so far away. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make this easily into a, a sport engine without costing yeah. the earth. Mo model code is sport. And they, they are, are very rare and exactly. it's easy to change them back. And basically the car is a one owner car um, uh, and they live in the middle of a forest. So it's exciting to go and buy this for a, for, for a foreign person. So I drove <laughs> 10 kilometers on this like stone road. Mm -hmm. And I can understand why he bought this car because it's a perfect rally road. Um, so basically it's been in the family f since, since new. Um, it needs a few small fixes. It needs a little bit of welding work at the back. Uh, needs a new interior, mainly carpets. Uh, but it's not, you know, it's one of those cars you should keep because if it's got the charm, it's original. Mm -hmm. As soon as you renovate it, you lose all this history with the car. So it's mm -hmm. just, as it is, small fixes, one last mm -hmm. MOT, mm -hmm. and you've got a fun car. Yeah. An icon car that yes. everyone likes. And, you know, you've got all the lights mm -hmm. in the front, the spotlights. and. Mm -hmm. I like these cars you can drive without having to think about it too much. And Michael, the, the Volvo PV Sport has kind of really gone through the roof the last couple of years. Yes, uh, yes. We sold one to the US for... 650,000 crowns, 65,000 euros. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they are very rare. I, I don't think... I think it was less than 5% that were produced as, mm. as uh, sport models. And, and it was the fastest and best you could get in those days. Exactly. And they were very good in rally. So, so uh, f f people who had normal Volvos, they were always dreaming about the sport model. And if you have money now, it's the time to buy one. If you go back to the dog picture, just a funny story. This dog, when we took the car out of the barn and started to photograph it, the dog thought, obviously, it was the <laughs> owner's back. Well, obviously, he's up in heaven. But that dog was around me every second. <laughs> every time I got in the car, dog. <laughs> oh. So the dog, I took a picture of that just to show that the dog is waiting for its uh, last drive. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Mm. Oh, that, and a very, very nice car to keep like this and have a lot of fun. Yeah. And there's not so many, there weren't so many export. I mean, you, no. You've been working with Volvo for yep. years. Yes. How many were sold export? There wasn't so many. Uh, not, uh, not so many. Not, here, not in Europe. No. No. In, Probably t m the. The bigger parts of the US, I would yes, say. Because yes. yes. we, we never had this model in the UK. No. 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 <laughs> Two small roads, driving too slow. That's perfect small roads, mm -hmm. rally roads. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time to wrap up this uh, pilot version of Auction Talk with Bilweb Auctions. The first time we done it in English, hopefully not the last time. It's uh, time to uh, shut down the camera and start preparing for Easter. Uh, go out there, drive your old car and see you in a while. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.